to the Journey to Forever podcast, where we discuss the highs and lows of life and love. Join us, your hosts, Flo and Joe, for a weekly recalculation of our roots as we navigate the twists and turns with candid conversation, comfort food and laughter. Welcome back, Forever family, to yet another episode of the Journey to Forever podcast. If Harry met Sally, do they decide to remain just friends? Or is it that reality bites and one day they decide to become friends with benefits? If you haven't guessed it by now, we are digging into the age-old topic of can men and women just be friends? But as usual, before we get into the main entree that is today's topic, let's indulge in our appetizer segment also known as What's Your Story? So, Joe, got a story to share about a spiritual awakening in your life? Uh, yes, I have an interesting one, a bit somber, but it's a definite changing point in my life. It was a few years ago, a uh, death of a friend. I lost him in tragic circumstances. And for some reason, that showed me that life is really short and you really need to start living and appreciate every day because you never know what will be your last moment. So that is my awakening story. And is that as spiritual as it gets because I really spoke to God himself and tried to find happiness in the lesson of that tragic moment. Okay. So, yeah, that's my story. All right. So, Flo, got a story to share about a book you read that had a lasting effect on you or completely changed the way you thought about something? Yep, I did. And I have to thank Auntie Oprah for this. I say Auntie Oprah because if you know me in real life, you know that I love books. If you look around my home now, you'd see books everywhere. <laughs> I enjoy reading. And one of the books that was on Oprah's book club, it was recommended by the Oprah's book club, is The Last Lecture. As we are recording this podcast, I'm actually seeing my copy of it over on a bookshelf. And I can say that that book really helped me to focus on what's important. If you are familiar with the book, you would know that the, the book is a memoir of sorts written by a lecturer, a former lecturer who was facing his death due to pancreatic cancer. And he was literally writing a book so that his children could have something to refer to because they were too young to, uh, to remember him. And yeah, like you mentioned, Joe, I have faced my own near-death experiences. So those two experiences combined helped me to really appreciate loving the people that are near and dear to me, making sure that they know that they are well-loved by me and also living my life to the fullest. Not, not leaving anything to chance because as you mentioned at any given moment you could be gone you don't know you could be it doesn't have to be an accident your own body could betray you <laughs> at no, times that's for sure so it's like yeah you never know well we move in now from the somber because those story times were a bit somber but here's what that's what we pulled out of the question box today and we move it into the sexy as we stated in the intro our topic of discussion today is opposite sex friendships. That is, can men and women just be friends? So, Joe, let's give our simple, direct yes or no response to that. Can a man and a woman just be friends? Yes, a man and a woman can just be friends. But I believe there are, hmm, how do I say, rules. <laughs> Agreed, we'll get into the rules later. And uh, It's more of a man or woman to just be friends, they have to be either they grew up together as they know one another from scratch, uh-huh. or 
they both have other partners uh-huh. and it's a mutual respect for each other. Okay. That, that was a long way. Lady, I saw no way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I gave, I gave it one time. I went in theater. I, I, I like this topic. I, I, yeah, I can tell. I can tell because you're very vocal today. So I agree with you, Joe. I think men and women can just be friends. Because as I've mentioned on this podcast before, I do have best friends that are male. I have, I would say more of my close group of friends are male rather than female. Don't ask me why. That's just how it is. <laughs> um, so I've heard stories. You've heard stories? Not, not with you in particular, but why women choose to have more male friends than women. Well, enlighten, enlighten us, please. Why do you think that is? Most of the women I've spoken to and came across in my lifetime, uh-huh. they all see with a lot of women friends, there's a lot of drama. A lot of drama. I it's can see that. always one thing or the other. And they prefer men because it is what it is. You get what you see, that's what you get. Okay, I agree because I have expressed those said feelings to you. I do not like drama. I be in the introvert that I am. I love to revel in my solitude. And I think women tend to need more contact, meaning they need more conversation. They need more, okay, let's go out and hang out. And that's not necessarily my speed. Yeah, I, I, my guy friends know. Okay, I could call you up. We could have a conversation, and we may not speak for weeks, and that's okay. That's not to say that some ladies are not like that, but it has been my experience that <laughs> with female friends that it tends to lead to a lot more drama, and I don't like no drama. Mm-hmm. I like Mary J. Blige in this, in this instance. No more drama in my life. <laughs> yeah. But- Anytime there are a lot of women gathered together, believe me, wow. Because for some reason, they begin to compete with each other. I have no idea why. If one gets married, everybody else is studying when they're going to get married. Well, it, it just gets complicated. If one buys a dress, the other one wants to get a new dress and to outdo that one. And even... Women, they break up into little sets. Into cliques? Yes. And in that set, there are little micro sets that it's, it's strange. It, that's why I said it's drama. Yeah, I like to keep life simple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, simplicity is good. Sometimes less is more. I know. <laughs> less, less is more when it, in terms of any kind of relationships. Less yeah. is more. <laughs> All right. So... You, you guys and girls know where we're going with this. We both believe that men and women can be just friends. But as Joe alluded to before, there are rules to this game. There needs to be rules to this game. So I have two simple rules. Mine are honesty and boundaries. What are your rules? Just the bullet points now. My rules? Uh-huh. I really don't have that specific rule okay because the woman i am around okay we knew from the get-go that we're just gonna be friends okay it was unsaid you know because i am as a man me personally if a woman has a guy in her life Mm mm-hmm as in that's her partner, whatever it may be. Mm-hmm. I put that boundary there. Even because I usually, if I have a friend, a woman, mm-hmm. I usually meet her partner. And we become good friends. And when that happens, we draw the line there. I, I feel like I'm betraying him. Okay, so is it that all of your female friends, your current female friends, that they are involved in long-term relationships, whether it be marriage or... Whatever else. Yes. Okay. They, they are usually the older. And who are not is because we are friends for a really long time. Okay. So we know the ins and outs of each other. Mm-hmm. So it's not a matter of crossing any lines. Or we're just there for comfort for each other, you know. We speak how we're going, you know. 
just make sure we there for each other. It's not a matter of there's no lines to be broken. Okay. It's unsaid. Hmm. That would unsaid. All right. For me, I agree with you. Boundaries are absolutely necessary. And for me, the boundaries have to to deal with that my partner should never feel that he is a lesser priority than my friendship. Meaning if I have to choose between the two, my partner or my friend, my partner wins at any point in time. And I could definitely say this because one of my good friends, he and I have been close friends since I was a teenager, since the age of 16. So that's a long time. I'm not going to say how old I am, but it's a long time. It's it's definitely more than, than 20 years. So, so for me, whenever he or I were in relationships, we would just step back. Step back meaning I never, I'm not going to call you as often. I don't expect you to hang out with me as often because more of your time is now allocated to that partner. Yeah. Right? And, and vice versa because there have been times when we've both been in relationships at the same time and then there are times when we're both single. So if we're both single, then we know, okay, fine. We, we could go to the movies this weekend because there's no expectation of your partner to spend time, you know, on over the weekend. Yes. So, but if we are hooked up in a relationship, we know that the time spent is going to be drastically reduced. And if I have to choose my partner, I'm sorry, <laughs> <laughs> I, I value the friendship, but in order for my partner to feel secure in our relationship, yeah. he needs to know that he is the priority. Yes, he shouldn't feel threatened in yes. any way. Yeah. But I guess with my view, it comes different with age. Well, okay, agreed. Also, because in my younger days, mm-hmm. there was no such thing really as a friend without benefits. At a point in time, I used to think like that. Really? Yeah. I am very serious. You know, but there were the one or two odd girls that you would not. But the new friends that you meet, and they wouldn't even say friends. They're basically acquaintances then. They weren't friends. Okay. In your mind, you were like, why? Hmm. I had to hit that, basically. That's what it just came down to. In your wilder years. Okay. That's interesting. Because even then, I knew I always needed that friend. Like, say something goes wrong. And I'm talking about the friend that I'm focused on. Like I say, that I've been friends the longest with. There, 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 there was family stress that I was dealing with. There was school stress, like around exam time. I guess that I needed that person to like bounce idea off of. So, as you mentioned before, get that comfort um, from. Like we could sit down and commiserate and talk about whatever, laugh and forget our problems for a little bit if necessary. So for me, it's like not every person that you'd encounter would <laughs> lead down that, that road. Because, yeah, it's necessary to have friends where there is no um, sexual intimacy. The intimacy is of a different kind. It's, there's no... Ooh. Well, for me, it was a bit different because I had a lot of cousins, a lot of girl cousins. Okay. So they basically were my friends. Okay. So if I had anything to bounce off, they were your cousin, right? You know, I have a lot of guy cousins also, and if I had anything to bounce off for anyone, mm-hmm. as in a friend, yes, I have close friends, okay. as in guys I know since I'm like five years old, mm. you know, and drama free, of course, and yeah, it didn't. Ha- I didn't really have cause to have outside of my family circle just girlfriends just to bounce stuff off of. Okay. Because, as we know from previous episodes, I am an introvert. So I never really used to deal with people much. You must have a purpose in my life. Okay. And sometimes that purpose didn't start off with you going to be my friend. Okay. You know, eventually may grow into friendship as I get to know you. Mm-hmm. And then I realize, okay, I don't really, this person seemed to be somebody of value. 
and not somebody who just passed in through your life. Okay. And when they gain that position mm-hmm. of being valuable in intellect and just general, generally being wise that you could just speak to, well, then that goes away. And as I got older, that feeling of having girlfriends as basically girls you could pass the time with if you catch what I'm saying, uh-huh. it would it it changed as I got older. Okay, so with speaking maturity came in. All right, so speaking of maturity now, since you and I met, we've definitely mentioned to each other the names and discussed um, our opposite sex friendships. I don't think I've met any of these people as yet. No, I, I, I can't recall. I know of them. We may have spoken on the phone briefly, but we've never met in person. I bring that up to ask, is it necessary for you to meet this opposite sex friend of your partner? You've met some of mine in person. No, for me, it's not necessary. Okay. Uh, I don't need to, but. I have one rule. All your friends should have names because I've been burnt. <laughs> you know, there's an old calypso from back in the day when the guy says, I want you to write all your family name on a piece of paper for me because every time he was with this woman and he come home, she would say, my cousin, Jerry or whatever. Right. That is my cousin. This is my cousin. Every time she was a new guy. Yeah. And she puts it over that being her cousin. So eventually he said, could you please write all your family name on a piece of paper for me? Okay. So, and over the years, I've been burnt where a girl would say, that's my friend. Oh, I was hanging out with my friends. Yes, you mm-hmm. see, and when your friends don't have names, mm-hmm. you never know if it's the same friend repeatedly or if it's new friends. So I get you. I prefer when your friends have names. That that's all. That's the only rule. So mentally, I get to know them. To know, right. okay, this is this is the tier of where this person is. Right? How good a friend are they? Yes, I, I totally agree. And all my all our opposite sex friends have names. So if you call a name, I know exactly who you're talking about, w- what your um, friendship is based on, meaning is a friend from work, is a friend from school, is a friend from this, yes. that, and the other. I know them how long. Right. Been. And folks, just to say I don't really have any new friends, I take the word friend very seriously. Well, ooh, as... Drake or DJ Khaled said, no new friends. Meaning, <laughs> I don't expect now that you and I are in a relationship that either one of us are going to get a new friend of the opposite sex. Yeah. Because why? <laughs> I have new, let's put it like this, they're not really my friend yet because we haven't had that length of time to build a friendship. Okay. But the new people I have in my life are co-workers because the came into the company okay. and we work together. Okay. That's it. But to say we go lime, we none of that none of those kind of things. All right. Know? So that's as new as it gets. Agreed. And my last thing around boundaries is that we meaning my friend and I need to be clear that there's no flirtatious behavior and not gonna indulge in any kind of inappropriate conversation. Like there are as you mentioned, co-workers, there are male co-workers of mine that would say some things and I would shut down the conversation immediately. Like, I not even tiptoeing around that line with you. Like, bro, you are just my bro. And I say, I using that word, that term loosely, meaning we are co-workers. So there, we could have conversations, um, on, on WhatsApp or whatever. We could, meaning it's purely, um, based on jokes. So we share a joke or something. There is no cross in the line. I have a clear definitive line. Don't come wrong with me that because I could easily block and delete. (laughs) (laughs) I I think we all are grown folks and we should know that we need to respect each other's boundaries. 
and not entertaining any kind of foolishness. Well, usually let's say that for women, it's a bit harder mm-hmm. because guys mm-hmm. are more forward and they would try all ways to see how they could change a conversation to go to a certain part. Not all meaning that they want to, mm-hmm. they want to pursue it in any way, but mm-hmm. they will just make rude jokes. And, but a woman, well, we're talking ladies here, most of them would not be that forward. And I use the word ladies. Okay. Not just a girl or any yeah. random woman. Yeah. Ladies, they would be more reserved mm-hmm. in their forwardness. Okay. I, I get that. Because to me, yes, if, if I want to pursue something sexually intimate with a man, you would definitely know because I, I would say, I will let you know how I feel. As we mentioned in our previous episode, shoot your shot. Shoot I'm your all, shot. I'm all for that, right? Don't be shy. If you really, if you really think that this guy is worth your time, then do that. But if I'm in a relationship, no, it, there are no shots being sent either way. <laughs> I'm not receiving any shots. I'm not sending any shots. <laughs> the only person who's sending there receiving is you and I. Nobody <laughs> else. <laughs> Not even blanks being fired. Exactly. Nothing, right? So I think a key, key thing is definitely boundaries. And for me, my second rule is honesty. I think we need, there needs to be honesty and transparency between you and your partner and definitely as well between you and your friend. Because to put it another way, you need to lay all your cards on the table. So as I mentioned before, like when you and I got together, I definitely, yes, mentioned all the names of all my friends, male and female. You knew the people who I would talk to most often, who I would hang out with, but granted, this hasn't been the year of hangouts, <laughs> right? So who I would be engaging in socially, whether it be on whatever app, right? Yeah. So definitely, um, Lay, lay your cards on the table, as you said. Where we met, what was the basis of the friendship? Um, because there may be things that you and that particular friend enjoy doing. Yeah. So, you know, I have a foodie friend. Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> you have a foodie friend. You have an adventure friend. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you have a, what is it, an intellectual friend. Exactly. <laughs> you have a, well, that friend goes for politics also. Right. Yeah. So, so there, there are friends that you, you share things in common and you know the basis of, of the friendship. And Joe could say those things because we are so honest, at least I am honest and transparent about the details. Well, not the details of our conversation, but I would say, Hey, I, I was talking to so and so today, right? And I'm so that if Joe happens to pick up my phone at any, there's nothing in there that he would see it and be like, Ooh. Because there's open honesty and transparency. You you know exactly what the deal is. <laughs> okay, what's next? Well, another thing for, for me in, in terms of honesty is that I don't think there's anything that should be hidden from your partner. Meaning, it can't be that my friend calls me up and say, hey, let's go do so, 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 so. And... I message you and say, hey, I had a, um, I won't be home or I don't even message and I go and hang out with this friend and I don't tell you. Yeah. It's not to say that I need your permission, but again, based on the honesty and transparency, I shouldn't have to hide from you what, whatever I do with my friend. If we go out to eat, whatever it is we go to do, you know exactly who I am hanging out with and where we at. <laughs> yeah. Because I don't want anybody to, to see me out hanging out with so-and-so and somebody say, hey, Joe, I see Flo by, yeah. Mm-hmm. X, Y, and Z. Yeah, and she went so-and-so and describe any person and Joe is like, what? <laughs> I touch you home. <laughs> yeah, I can understand that. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. We, we, don't want, we don't want that kind of thing. That's recipe for quarrel. Joe picking up the phone and saying, so Miss Flo, where are you right now? And I'm like, um, uh, yes, because the other thing is, I can't lie for nothing. I cannot lie. <laughs> yeah, we, 
I have noticed that being just saying where you are uh-huh. is a simple courtesy. Mm-hmm. And it's why not? What's the point of hiding? And you should know your partner. Uh-huh. Unless if you have a partner that's a stalking type, maybe you shouldn't be with them. True. So that's a what a red flag basically. So by you just calling and saying, Hey, I'm going to buy shoes with John, Joe, mm-hmm. whoever it may be. Mm-hmm. There shouldn't be no problem with that. It's like, okay, you know, trust is a big part of it. Definitely. So once you are, o- are open, honest, transparent, and you set your boundaries, definitely the trust would be there. And I think that's what you need uh, it, to have in order to have a successful relationship. Because there, are, uh, let's think about it. You don't necessarily want your partner hanging out with you and his friend all the time because you enjoy having that time away from your partner to yeah. to you know have your freedom, have your own memories with with that friend or friends. So trust is essential in order for you to be comfortable for both of you to be comfortable. It's like, yeah, that <laughs> <laughs> nobody's doing it's any kind of shenanigans. All right. Any other thoughts on this topic? Can men and women be friends? Well, I just say yes, men and women can be friends without, as you put it, shenanigans. Mm-hmm. It is possible, you know, because everybody needs a friend sometime. Definitely. And you know what we do with friends most often? Mm-hmm. Think to eat. Yes, mm. yes, yes, yes. Right. Well, Flo, today's thing to eat question is, Mm -hmm. what is your perfect sandwich? If you had to put a sandwich together, what would it be? Be it you making it yourself or having it at a special restaurant, wherever it might be, what is your perfect sandwich? I've mentioned before. My love for everything Italian food. And this question, uh, yes, my voice went low because I'm thinking and imagining sinking my teeth into the sandwich. For a time in my life, I was vegetarian. And there was this restaurant close by my workplace that sold this lovely, what I would describe as a caprese sandwich. Yeah, that was my attempt at speaking Italian. So there was toasted bread and there was this nice pesto on, smeared on the bread. And then it was layered with basil and mozzarella and tomatoes. Listen, that toasted, mmm. My mouth is watering right about (laughs) now. Because you get the freshness, like the pesto was everything. It was delicious. You can't have the sandwich without the pesto. Because to me, the pesto was like the, just the, the, the extra oomph to make it taste so delicious. Yeah, mm-hmm. never made it myself, but definitely I would spend my money for that sandwich. <laughs> well, folks, a uh, little story about Flo. Flo does not like a lot of sauce on her food. And... She's raving about this pesto, so it has to be really, really good. Definitely. <laughs> I ain't too sure about the vegetarian part of it, but all right. The pesto has to be awesome. Okay, meat mouth. <laughs> <laughs> so what's your <coughs> favorite sandwich? Sorry. My favorite sandwich. I am not as fancy as Flo might be, but my favorite sandwich is a simple steak and cheese. A regular Philly steak and cheese with, you know, that thin slices of beef uh-huh. and the onions and the green peppers. Mm-hmm. Put it over the top. Mm. That is what does it for me. That is just awesome. Melted cheese, mm. onions, green peppers, slight sauce. I don't, I don't need for much. Just a little ketchup and I am fine. Yeah. That is my perfect sandwich. I don't want the bread to be too soft. Mm-hmm. Probably a, a, a nice 
dinner. No, well, not a dinner roll. A hoagie? But, yeah, a bread with a little body to it. Okay. It's like the film or a, a Tijan roll. Yes. Papa. Oh, my. Mm. And it say I might not like, be that fancy, but I, I have a little fancy in my book. <laughs> a little, a little song. <laughs> so, yes, that is my perfect sandwich. The perfect Philly's cheesesteak. Okay. Mm. I think we need to make these sandwiches soon. Yes, yeah. we really do. Because it'll open up my appetite. <laughs> and, and I need to satisfy and fill that, that, that tank called my stomach. Yes. So we move into our last segment, which is my favorite segment, I must say. And it's called, What's Filled Your Love Tank? Ah, well, what filled my love tank this week? Um... I won't go into details, but it's something floated that in regards to our future, future building, you know, progressing in life, it was something that I take very seriously. And I like that. It's a progressive move and having her pushing me basically and knowing that it's not stagnant. She thinks for herself and she's there to motivate me. That filled my love tank this week. Oh, baby, are you saying that I'm your cheerleader? Oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> you are, you are, you are. More than just a cheerleader. You, you basically are a leader. Of, you know. Okay. Well, I, I take that. I, I consider myself a natural born leader being the firstborn. <laughs> so, what filled your love tank? Well... There was this really sweet thing that I woke up to yesterday morning. As we've mentioned numerous times on this podcast, Joe has had to work numerous weekends of late. And when I rolled over, I noticed that you'd laid the pillows right next to me, like on your side of the bed. And it was just like so sweet because I was like, oh, he, did, he didn't want me to like wake up and stretch my hand out and there was, a, um, there was emptiness on that side of the bed. <laughs> <laughs> so I had your pillows. And then this morning, when you were leaving, you made sure and you tucked me in. And I, ladies, I'm sorry. It just feels so good when, you know, your significant other like takes care of you. It's sometimes it's simple things because he didn't need to do that. He was rushing off to work. But just to know that, you recognize that I would miss you. <laughs> so, yes, that filled my love tank. <laughs> awesome. That's good. I do my little part. <laughs> All right. So, guys, let us know. Do you have opposite sex friendships? Uh, if yes, how is that working out for you? If no, why not? Let us know as usual. You can find us on Instagram at Journey to Forever TT. And as usual, we love hearing from you. So until next week, thanks for listening. Ciao. Bye, folks.